Have you ever wanted your Stardew Valley games to look a little... different? Well, if you have, then this video is definitely a great place to start. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Dup here, and today we're going to be going over how to add mods to Stardew Valley for PC, what to look out for as you do, and a few tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that will hopefully help you out. If you've never modded Stardew Valley before because of how complicated, overwhelming, or scary you think it is, I'm going to try and change your mind today and give you the confidence to mod the absolute heck out of your game. Mods help keep the game fun and fresh and are the reason I'm still absolutely addicted to and actively playing Stardew Valley four years after its release. This is going to be the first video in a series all about modding Stardew Valley, so even if you already know how to add mods to your game, or if this is a bit basic for you, don't worry, we'll get to the juicy stuff soon enough. With that said though, let's get started. You'll first want to start out by backing up your save files. Don't let that scare you though. For the sake of transparency, this is something I recommend, but don't personally do myself. The only issues I've ever had with mods corrupting my save files was when I was adding and removing mods that added new NPCs into the game. Outside of that, I have never had to load a backup of my game, and I've been actively modding Stardew Valley for over two years without issues. To back up your save files, all you need to do is go to your start menu, type in percent app data percent, and click on the folder. Next, navigate to the Stardew Valley folder, and inside here, you'll find a folder called saves. This is where each farm's save data is stored, and you'll notice that each file is actually named based on the name of your farmer. You can either go into this folder and back up the specific farm or farms that you plan to use mods with, or what I'd recommend is just to back up the entire save folder. To do this, simply copy the folder with Control C and place it wherever you'd like with Control V. For this example, I'll just paste it on my desktop. Just be sure to give it a name that you'll remember. I personally like to add the date that I made this backup as well, so if I ever do have to load a previous save, I know when the save I'm loading is from. Now that we've got our save files backed up though, it's almost time to install some mods. Before we can do that though, you'll need to install something called Smappy, or Stardew Modding API. This is the application that loads all of your mods into the game. To download it, head to nexusmods.com forward slash Stardew Valley. I'll have this and all other links mentioned down in the description. If you've never used Nexus before, you'll need to create an account by clicking the orange register button in the top right corner. It's easy, free, and shouldn't take you more than a minute or so to do. Just enter your email address and verify that you're a human, check your email that you used and enter the four digit verification code, and then create a username, password, confirm your password, and then agree to the terms and conditions and privacy policy, and then click create my account. If you are creating a new account, it'll then take you to a successfully registered page where it's gonna try to get you to pay for a plan, which you totally don't need to do. Nexus Mods is totally free to use, so it's up to you if you want to purchase a plan or not. If you don't, or if you do, regardless, once you're done, go back to nexusmods.com forward slash Stardew Valley. Once you're logged in, simply search for Smappy in the search bar at the top of the page. It should be the very first result. Once on the page, click on the button that says Manual in the bottom right corner of the banner image. And assuming you're thrifty, like myself, uh, go ahead and click the Slow Download button and wait the whole five seconds it takes for the file to download. Once downloaded, right click on the downloaded file in your downloads bar and click show in folder to be taken to the zip file that we just installed. If you don't see a downloads bar, navigate to wherever your downloads typically end up and you should see that file there. Once there, right click on the file and select extract here. If you're on Windows 10, you should see this option by default, but if not, you might need to download a third party file extraction tool to accomplish this. My personal favorite is 7-Zip because it's free and easy to use. I'll put a link to it in the description for those that need it. Once extracted, you should see the installer file appear. Double click on that to open it up and double click on the install on Windows file. This little window will pop up and all you have to do is type the number one and hit enter. It's that simple. Smappy is now successfully installed. And now that it's installed, we need to set things up so that when you launch Stardew Valley, Smappy launches along with it and loads your mods. We also want to retain the ability to launch the game without mods if we ever want, so I'll show you how to do both. 
Before you close out of the Smappy installer window, copy the second line in green. Don't worry if you capture any spaces before or after, they won't matter. I'll also have this text in the description as it is the same for everyone. Once you've got that copied though, you can X out of this window. Now, open Steam and in your library, right click on Stardew Valley and click on Properties. Under the General tab on the left, head down to the Launch Options section and paste what we just copied. This will ensure that whenever you launch Stardew Valley through Steam, it's actually launched through Smappy instead. But more importantly, it will also allow for achievements to be earned and for your playtime to be logged so you can compare with your friends who's more addicted to Stardew Valley. Most Stardew modding tutorials I've watched end right here on this subject, but to that, I say nay, I like to be thorough. So in the event that you ever want to go back to non-modded Stardew Valley, or vanilla as it's called, you can simply delete what you pasted in the launch options. I'm not sure why you'd want to go back, because modding is just so awesome, but there you go. If, however, you'd like the ability to choose on a whim whether you want to load Stardew Valley with mods or without mods, here's how. Click on the Local Files tab, and in the top right corner, select Browse. This will take you to where Stardew Valley is installed on your PC. If you scroll down, you should see two files, one named stardewvalley.exe and one named stardewmoddingapi.exe. If you don't see the .exe, don't worry, that's just a Windows setting that I have enabled. They're the only two files with colored logos and of the application type, so they're pretty hard to miss. Whenever you click that green play button for Stardew Valley and Steam, these are the files that are being opened. The Stardew Valley file launches the vanilla game while the Stardew Modding API file launches the game with mods. What I would recommend is to make a shortcut of these by right clicking and clicking create shortcut, then naming that shortcut and placing it wherever you'd like. Alternatively, you can right click and select pin to start to have it appear in your start menu like I have here, which is my personal preference. And there you go. Now you can launch the game with and without mods whenever you feel like it. But if you're anything like me, once you mod, you won't go back. <laughs> Make sure you leave this window open though, as we'll need it in the coming steps. All right, it's time for the fun part, adding mods. To do so, Nexus Mods is the place to go. So let's head back over there. There are other places you can download mods from, such as moddrop.com and another that we'll be discussing later in this series, but Nexus is definitely the primary place to get mods and has more than enough to get you started. This is the part where you get to go shopping for mods. The world is your oyster. Have some fun with it. You can get to the point where you end up adding so many mods that you spend more time modding Stardew Valley than playing Stardew Valley, but trust me, it's just as much fun. You can add mods that change the visuals of just about anything you can think of. You can change the entire map, get a new farm layout, add new items, new hairstyles, new festivals, cheats. You can spawn items, run at super speed, teleport places. It's pretty awesome. To find mods, you can just start scrolling if you want, or use the search bar at the top if you know exactly what you want. But if you're not quite sure what you want to install yet, but you want to refine your search at least a little bit, Go ahead and click on the Mods dropdown at the top and select Mod Categories. Here, you can pick from a number of different categories, such as Buildings, which will contain mods that either add new buildings or change the way existing buildings look. Same with characters, clothing, furniture, animals, you name it. Just know that these categories are determined by how the mod author uploaded the mod. So if there's a mod that adds a new NPC, for example, but the mod author didn't categorize it as new characters when they uploaded the mod, it won't show up here. Just keep that in mind. Once you've found a mod you like, you'll need to download it. Let's quickly go over how to do that. I'll use the Content Patcher mod as an example because there's a very good chance that you'll be using it yourself as it's needed for the vast majority of any aesthetic mods out there. To find it, simply search for it in the search bar. It should be the first thing that comes up. On the description tab of the page, it shows you everything you need to know about the mod, including this very important drop down here called Requirements. If you click on this, it will show you every mod needed for this particular mod to work, which in this case, that's only Smappy, which we just installed, so we're good to go. 
If we hadn't installed Smappy already though, we could click on this link to be taken to the Smappy page and download it, then come back here and proceed to download Content Patcher. It also contains a list of mods that require this mod, if any, which is a good way to get ideas of mods to install. With Content Patcher though, that is a very long list. Now, to install the mod, instead of clicking on the manual download button like we did for Smappy, I personally prefer and recommend to go to the Files tab. This will allow you to see a little bit more information about the download itself from the mod author, which will sometimes include instructions on how to install it, versions of Stardew Valley and or Smappy that it's compatible with, or even what changes have been made to the mod with this latest version of it. I'll be covering everything related to updating mods in a later video, so more on this then. All you need to do to download the mod is to click Manual Download, and if there are additional requirements, you'll get a pop-up letting you know about them. Since we already have Smappy installed, click Download, then click Slow Download, and once it downloads, we're going to navigate to where that file lives and extract it, just like we did before with Smappy. Now that we've downloaded a mod, we need to install it. So let's go back to our Stardew Valley folder that we all left open, right? <laughs> In here, there's two folders that you need to know about. The first of which is the content folder. This is where all of the game's data files live. Every single visual aspect of the game, every line of dialogue, everything. The mods folder is what we want though. If you open this up, you should see three files inside of here. The mods folder itself, as well as these three folders, were created when we installed Smappy. Do not delete them, as they are required for Smappy to run. To install Content Patcher, which we just downloaded and extracted, all you need to do is drag and drop the extracted Content Patcher folder into the mods folder, and we're done. Now, we could launch Smappy right now and go into the game with Content Patcher installed, but we wouldn't see any difference. The reason for that is because Content Patcher is what is known as a framework mod. It doesn't do anything on its own, but instead it adds some code to the game that allows for other mods to work. To test things out and make sure everything is working as expected, let's grab another mod that relies on Content Patcher to work. For this, I'll be using Wayback Pelican Town, a visual mod that is very quickly becoming one of my favorites. Just like we did before, we'll search for it, double check the requirements and make sure we have what we need, go to the files tab, and here you'll see something that we didn't see when downloading Content Patcher. This is a mod that not only has a main file, but also optional files. For mods that have these optional files, sometimes they need to be downloaded instead of the main file, and sometimes they need to be downloaded in addition to the main file, and unfortunately, it's not always clear. One trick you can use to tell though is to compare the file sizes. If the optional file is significantly smaller, as is the case here, it's very likely that it's needed in addition to the main file. But if they're roughly the same size, there's a very good chance it's needed instead of that main file. Just like before though, we'll click manual download on the main file, download, slow download, extract the file, and then drag and drop it into our mods folder. Before we test these mods to make sure we did everything correctly, I'd like to just take a second and ask that if you found any value in this information or have any interest in learning more about modding Stardew Valley in general, please leave a like and consider subscribing as I have a lot more content planned for the future. If you have any questions about modding Stardew Valley or related topics that you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comments. I am always open to new ideas. Okay, now that we've added some mods, it's time to test things out. I realize I only added two mods here, but you can add as many as you want. Just keep in mind that if something goes wrong, the fewer you add at a time between testing sessions, the easier it is to figure out where things went wrong. To load the game with mods though, we can either launch the game through Steam because of what we pasted into the launch options from earlier, or from the start menu if we chose to pin it to the start menu, or from that shortcut that we created. Once you do this, you'll see the Smappy log show up. This window has a ton of useful information for helping you troubleshoot things if the need arises, which is something we'll be covering extensively in a future video in this series. I realize everything in here looks a little complicated, but I guarantee it's not as confusing as it looks. 
Make sure that you leave this window open in the background though while playing Stardew Valley. The moment you close it, it will close out of the game as well. For now though, all you need to know about the Smappy Log is that the color of the text is pretty helpful. White and gray are good. Yellow is cautionary, but usually nothing to worry about. Red is bad. And purple means you have mods that need updating. Once Smappy finishes doing its thing, Stardew Valley will launch just like normal, and you can go ahead and load your farm that you want to test your mods with. And voila! Congratulations, your game is now modded. What you're seeing here is actually more than just the two mods that we added. This is actually the mod list I use for my modded Stardew Twitch streams every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, <laughs> and in case anyone was curious, I'll add links to my mod list for both this farm and my modded Let's Play farm here on the channel if you want a place to start to get ideas for mods. I do have, you know, a few installed after all. A, a few hundred, that is. I hope you found this video helpful and now have the confidence needed to mod your own Stardew Valley games. I told you, it's not as scary as it seems. Now that you have the basics down though, the next step is to gain a better understanding of how mods themselves actually work, which will give you even more confidence and help you tremendously when it comes to troubleshooting and just simply having more fun with modding the game. If that sounds interesting to you, then continue on to the next video in my Modding Stardew Valley 101 playlist. I hope to see you there. Until then though, as always, take care.